Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about spring. If you live in the northern hemisphere, it is spring. It actually started a few weeks ago. I'm a little bit late with this lesson about spring but we still have about two little over two months of spring left before it is summer and I have to be honest, spring just started here. I know it started three weeks ago but it really just started a couple of days ago. Before that, it certainly felt like winter. So, welcome once again to this English lesson about spring where I'll talk about all of the things that I would see uh and the vocabulary I would use as an English speaker living in the northern hemisphere where spring is just beginning. Springtime. So, springtime is basically spring. It's a word we use to talk about this time of year. A lot of times in winter, you'll say things like, I can't wait till springtime. You could say, I can't wait till spring or you might refer to spring using springtime when talking about it in the past. You might say, oh, back in the springtime, uh I enjoyed being outside more because the weather was cooler. So, springtime, certainly uh the time of year when winter ends and spring begins. Uh right now, springtime like I mentioned earlier is uh it's in full swing here in Ontario, Canada. It is uh beautiful outside. The weather is getting warmer. The grass is growing and so many other things are happening. I'm really happy that it's springtime even though winter is my favorite season. So, the first day of spring, uh that's how we refer to it. The first day of spring, I hope I got this right, was March 20th, 2022 or March 20th, 2022. We usually just in English when we say the year, we kind of split it up and I guess we're saying it wrong in a way but 2022 is the current year and spring actually started on March 20, 2022. There's something that we say a lot as spring is approaching. Sometimes as winter is ending and as spring is beginning, we kind of have days where some days it feels like spring and other days it still feels like winter. So, we use the English verb to feel to talk about the season. So, like I mentioned earlier, even though spring started on March 20th, it felt like winter. It didn't feel like spring on March 20th. In fact, yesterday and maybe the day before were the first two days where I would say, oh, it feels like spring today. Yesterday felt like spring. Today as well when I look outside, it just feels like spring today. So, that's how we would describe just that nice feeling of uh sunshine and warmth and the opposite of winter. It feels like spring. And we start to see what we call signs of spring. There are a lot of signs of spring and I'll talk about a few of them in this lesson but one of the obvious signs of spring for me is when things start to grow and things start to turn green. So, right now when you walk outside, um I showed this earlier in one of my videos um that you can see daffodils and tulips starting to come out of the ground. So, certainly when things start to grow, that is one of the signs of spring. A really nice sign. We also start to have longer days. So, in the northern hemisphere, the winter days are really, really short. I'm sure it's the same in the southern hemisphere where it's the opposite but specifically where I live, the further north you go, the shorter the days are in the winter. So, one thing we notice um when spring starts is that you can tell that the days are longer. Longer days are really, really nice. When you get home from work, it's not dark. In the middle of the winter when I get home from work, it's dark. Now, when I get home from work, I can actually work outside for a few hours because it doesn't get dark till about seven or eight at night. So, that's really nice. It's nice to have longer days. Another sign of spring. And then of course, we have what's called a spring breeze. The only difference between a winter breeze and a spring breeze is that a winter breeze is really cold and a spring breeze is in the spring and it's very pleasant. If I was to go outside right now, I can see that there's a nice spring breeze and because it's a warm day, I would enjoy the breeze and if you don't know what a breeze is, it's a light wind. So, the wind's blowing just a little bit. It's really nice in the spring. On a warmer day, 
if there is a nice spring breeze to kind of keep you cool as you walk or exercise or work outside. And one thing we like about spring is fresh air. All of the windows in our house are closed during the winter. But when we start to have days where it feels like spring, when we start to have days in the spring where it's warm enough, we open our windows to get fresh air in our house. We even also say um I'm going outside to get some fresh air. So, fresh air I always think of spring when I think of fresh air. You can open a window in the summer or fall to get fresh air as well but certainly after having the windows closed all winter, it's nice to open the windows of our house to get a little bit of fresh air once spring has started. And the trees start to leaf out. So, if you see this picture here, you'll notice that small leaves are starting to come out of the branch on this tree. When I go outside in the spring, the trees are just starting to leaf out. In about a month, the trees will have leafed out and they'll have leaves and you can sit in the shade but right now, the trees are just starting to leaf out. They're just starting to get leaves on them. They're very, very tiny but I can't wait because um when you make videos outside, it's nice to make them in the shade and in the spring before the trees leaf out, it's very sunny and warm but there's no shade. So, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, a little bit of shade under the trees in a few weeks. Uh we also have spring showers. So, a spring shower is simply a light rain in the spring. It does tend to rain a lot in the spring where I live. Quite often when I go to work, it's raining. We'll have a little spring shower in the morning. We might have some spring showers tomorrow actually. Uh they're forecasting that there might be spring showers. All a spring shower is is it's a really light rain in the spring. Uh if it happened in the summer, we would just call it a shower <laughs> but in the spring when it rains, uh it's usually nice to just feel the rain coming down. It's what helps everything grow. It's nice when we have a spring shower uh in the spring. And next, uh we just have lots of sunshine. Probably this is one thing that people who experience a really, really strong, harsh winter, one thing they really appreciate is spring sunshine. When you can get out in the spring and you can feel the sunshine on your face, it's just very, very nice after being inside for several months. It's very nice to go outside and to just have a little bit of sunshine. There was actually sunshine when I started the lesson but when I look outside now, I see that it has clouded over. So, hopefully, the clouds go away and we have a bit more sunshine later today. And then we also have what's called the spring thaw. The snow melts. If there's any ice, the ice melts. Everything thaws. So, we go from a winter um state from a state where everything is frozen to a time where during the day, there's things everything thaws but at night, it freezes again but now, we're at the point in spring where it's above zero all day and all night. So, now everything has thawed. There's no more snow. There's no more ice. It's very, very nice outside right now. So, I mentioned daffodils. Here in Canada, there are three flowers that bloom really early in the spring. Uh the first, I do not have a picture of and that's I think called a crocus but daffodils, excuse me <coughs> but daffodils are one of the first flowers to bloom. They have not bloomed yet in my area. They are still growing but they're definitely out of the ground and in a few weeks, we will see them bloom. Nice, beautiful yellow flowers. Another flower that blooms in the spring is a tulip. Now, tulips bloom after daffodils in our area. As the daffodils finish blooming, the tulips start to bloom uh and tulips are really nice because they bloom. We have like early and late daffodils so they kind of bloom for a longer stretch of time for us but we definitely have uh daffodils and tulips growing right now and they will all bloom in the next couple of months. They will all bloom this spring and I'll make sure I put some I'll I'll make sure I feature some of these in videos coming up. 
people do a lot of planting in the spring. So, whether it's planting like this, this man is planting by hand or whether it's planting in a big field like farmers will plant in their fields in a couple of weeks. Um first we plant corn, then we plant beans here in Canada. But right now, people might be planting in the ground but it's a little bit early. Generally, in Canada, we do not plant until May in my part of Canada. Things are different in different parts of Canada but where I live, if you planted right now, people would think you're crazy. It's a little bit too early for most things. Now, that being said, Jen has planted a few things in the field, a few flower types that do not mind the cold. So, we do have a few things planted but for us as flower farmers, we will do a lot more planting in about three or four weeks. And we'll do that by buying seeds. You can see here, there are a lot of seed packets or small packets of seeds. We buy a lot of seeds in the spring. Uh, actually, we buy them in the winter and then we plant a lot of seeds in the spring. If you're wondering how Jen grows so many flowers if you can't plant early, um, that's because we have a lot of seeds started in our basement. So, we start seeds in pots and then we later transplant them out into the field. So, definitely in spring, people buy seeds and people get ready to plant their seeds and then plant them. Um if you grow a vegetable garden in my area, most people will plant their garden um yeah, maybe around May 15th. It depends on what they are growing. We also do some pruning. So, pruning is something that it depends on what you are pruning. Some things like to be pruned in the winter. Some things like to be pruned in the early spring. Pruning is when you take pruners and you take off either some of the new growth or you take off some of the older growth or th- parts of the plant that are dead. So, pruning is something they do with fruit trees. Pruning is something they do with vines in a vineyard. So, for grapes um but pruning is something that happens I guess mostly in the winter and also in the early spring. It depends on what you are pruning but here a lot of pruning happens I think when things are dormant. That means that they are not actively growing. They are waiting for spring. Pruners are dangerous by the way. Be careful when you use pruners. There's a lot of mud right now. You can see this person is walking in an area that's very muddy uh because there are a lot of spring showers because it rains a lot in the spring. There is a lot of mud. Uh so, when I go outside right now to make a video, I'm often wearing my rubber boots because even when I walk in the lawn, there are areas where there's lots of mud. It is very muddy. Um actually, today it's not too bad because it hasn't rained for a few days. But uh, as soon as it rains again, we will certainly have mud uh, again. Lots of mud. I hate it when my kids track mud into the house. When you track mud into the house, it means you wear your muddy boots and you walk into the house and then the house gets mud in it. There are a lot of birds chirping. So, some birds go south for the winter. There are not a lot of birds singing or chirping in the winter. But if you've watched some of my videos on my other channel, uh you'll notice that occasionally you can hear a lot of birds chirping in the background. Uh birds seem to be back. Birds have returned uh from the south. By the way, birds do migrate. We'll talk about that in a sec. Uh but the birds are certainly chirping. When I wake up in the morning right now, I can hear birds chirping outside my window. And there's definitely a bird nest here or there around the property. Right now, You'll often see birds flying with a little piece of straw or grass in their mouth uh, and they are building nests so that they can lay eggs so that they can uh, have young. So, right now, definitely, uh, I know when I was walking the other day, I saw a bird nest. A, A bird was building a bird nest in a tree. And I talked about this a little bit. The grass is green. We have not started mowing the grass yet. We have not mown our lawn. That's hard to say, isn't it? We haven't mown it yet. Mowed. Sorry. We haven't mowed our lawn. (laughs) Sorry. I'm saying things wrong. Uh, But 
uh, it will be something that we will need to do in about a week or so. Our grass is very green. Our lawn is very green and we will need to mow the lawn uh, in about a week. In fact, we probably could mow a little bit of it today. There's certain areas where the grass is very green and it's and it's already grown quite a bit where we could mow it. And by the way, the smell of fresh cut grass is something that you that's definitely a sign of spring. So, I talked about the birds have returned. There are birds that fly south for the winter. So, there's birds that live in my area throughout the spring, summer and fall and then they fly south. There is a migration. Birds migrate. Um not all birds but a lot of birds migrate south. So, in the winter, we have birds but some birds uh have gone. They're they're kinda like um people. They go where it's warm in the winter so that they can uh enjoy life a little bit better. I think some birds don't like cold weather. And then often in the spring, uh people will just wear a spring jacket. So, it's not warm enough to go outside with just short sleeves. You still need to wear something but a winter coat is too warm. So, often you will own a spring jacket and if you're wondering what the difference is between a fall jacket and spring jacket, for me, they're the same thing. Uh my this is my spring jacket. Right here. It's my spring jacket. It's also my fall jacket. But generally, a spring jacket will be colorful and a fall jacket might be uh gray or black or brown. Um for some reason, a fall jacket is less colorful but that's not a hard and fast rule. A jacket can be any color but a spring jacket is often also waterproof because there's a chance it might rain in the spring. We do a lot of spring cleaning in the spring. I think in the winter because you can't open your windows, you keep your house clean but a lot of people when it gets really nice and when you can open your windows and have lots of fresh air, it also makes them want to clean their whole house but like extra clean. So, we do clean our house all year but in the spring, we sometimes open all the windows on a Saturday and do some spring cleaning where we clean everything. We just do a better job of cleaning um than we normally would like a deep cleaning. And in the yard, we sometimes do some spring cleanup. We started doing this actually the other day. In the winter, sometimes uh little branches fall off of trees when it's windy. In the winter, sometimes things blow around and then when the snow melts, you have to clean up your yard. So, we do quite a bit of spring cleanup in the spring. Um we've done a tiny bit of spring cleanup but we need to do a little bit more this weekend I think. I think we'll get out there and do some spring cleanup tomorrow and I also have a day off on Monday. So, I might do some spring cleanup then as well. And then obviously, this was something I mentioned earlier. Uh spring is a time where it's a lot easier for kids to play outside. Our kids do play outside in the winter but usually for maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half. When it's below zero, it's fun to play outside but you don't play outside for three hours because it's just too cold. So, it's nice when spring comes because kids can play outside uh and they sometimes play outside for hours on end. In English, when you say someone does something for hours on end, it means they do it for several hours for a long time. Rubber boots. I talked about these a little bit earlier. I think in other parts of the world in English, they call them wellies or other names but in Canada, we just call them rubber boots. Boots that are made out of rubber so that when you walk outside when it's really wet, your feet don't get wet. You shouldn't leave your rubber boot laying on its side though. That's a good way for water to get in your boot but I have been wearing my rubber boots outside quite often lately because it has gotten uh, a little bit warmer outside. Uh because there are a lot of puddles. Um right now, the puddles are gone but I think by tomorrow night, there will be lots of puddles again. Uh puddles in the driveway. Puddles, of course, are little pools of water that form when it rains um but uh right now, uh, things are actually unseasonably dry uh right now. So, that's a good word for you. 
Uh, it is the season of spring. Normally, it's quite wet outside but it's actually quite dry. So, we would say it's unseasonably dry. In the summer, when you have a really cold day, you could say it's unseasonably cold today. So, it basically means, wow, this is a strange temperature or a strange situation for this season. So, we have buds. So, there are a lot of buds on the trees right now. Buds are things that form just before a flower comes out or just before leaves come out. So, uh, right now, the trees have a lot of buds on them. Uh, on some trees, those buds will open and there will be a blossom or a little flower. On some trees, the buds will open and leaves will come out. So, again, I'm looking forward uh, to things leafing out so that we have a little bit of shade. And then, we talked about blossoms. To me, a blossom is a tiny, tiny flower on a tree or bush. So, I wouldn't say Yeah, how would you say that? I would say a flower like a tulip will bloom uh but a tree will have blossoms on it. So, uh, a little bit of a difference between the two. I should have asked Jen for a more formal definition before I did the lesson. And then we certainly have bees. As soon as you have flowers, as soon as there are blossoms, you will start to see bees come and visit. The bees are collecting pollen, I think. This is where I should learn my science before I do the lesson but we definitely have a lot more bees. Um not so much today but in a few weeks uh in the middle of spring uh you'll start to see a lot of bees buzzing around outside. Busy as bees they will be. And then we have the return of insects. These are called ladybugs in Canada and I think in the United States. I think in The UK, they might call them ladybirds. We call them ladybugs. So, a small bug, it flies a little bit and it has like a red back and then some black dots on it. So, the insects are slowly returning. Uh when you go outside, you can start to see some of the early insects uh are active and around. Uh soon, we'll have mosquitoes. That is one of my least favorite insects. Um spring break. So, spring break has actually already happened. Spring break is when students don't go to school for one week in the spring. It usually happens in the early spring. It sometimes even happens late summer. Uh, Sorry, (laughs) take that. Late winter. It depends on the year but most of the time, uh spring break takes place in the early spring. So, we actually had spring break a couple of weeks ago. Uh we had spring break. We actually had spring break a week before spring actually started. So, while we were on spring break, it was still technically winter and at the end of spring break, it was uh March 20th, the beginning of spring. In my part of Canada and in many other parts of uh the world where there are maple trees and where there is winter, in the spring, you will have maple syrup. So, maple syrup is made from the sap of maple trees and then they kind of boil it down into a syrup and it's very, very sweet. It's one of Canada's major exports. So, if you've never had maple syrup, you should try it sometime. It's it's quite expensive but it's also very sweet and very, very yummy. Another thing you will see a lot of in my part of the world in the spring is you will see motorcycles. You cannot drive a motorcycle in the winter. So, as soon as it starts to get warm enough, usually around the first or second week of spring, you will start to see motorcycles on the road again. Uh you can't drive a motorcycle in the winter because it's too slippery. You will just fall over if you try to drive a motorcycle in the snow. So, even uh the other day, I was out and I saw a number of motorcycles um because it was the warmest day of the week. Uh, and people would come home from work and they would go and take a go for a ride on their motorcycle. By the way, an interesting thing in Canada, motorcycles aren't for some people, it's their main form of transportation but most of the people I know, they own a motorcycle and they ride it for pleasure or they ride it for fun. So, most of the people I know don't drive their motorcycle to work. They drive their car to work. And they go on the weekend and drive their motorcycle for fun. So, an interesting thing about Canada. Probably because 
Um yeah, you can't drive your motorcycle for about five months out of the year. You can only drive your motorcycle from about now till about October and then it gets a little chilly and a little cold um and when the snow starts to fly in the fall, you can't really drive a motorcycle. The other thing you will see a lot of are classic cars. This would be like a hot rod or classic car or sports cars. So, like a brand new Lamborghini or Ferrari. In Canada, winter is not a good time to drive a classic car or a sports car for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you have a Lamborghini and you try to drive it in the snow, it just won't work very good. The tires will spin a lot and you'll go off the road really easily. Number two, in the winter in Canada, we put a lot of salt and sand on our roads so that it melts the snow and this or the sand gives you traction and both of those things are not good for fancy nice cars. They uh, the salt especially will cause the car to rust really fast. So, generally, people who own really really nice cars, rich people, they don't drive them in the winter. They drive something else in the winter but just the other day, I was making a video and someone drove by in like a 1970 uh Chevy Nova. Really nice paint job. Really big engine. Um that person would not drive that car in the winter. So, in the spring, we tend to see a lot more classic cars. A classic car is like a really old car that someone has made to look nice again or sports cars. Uh 